this video we're discussing simple linear regression. So regression is a modeling technique we use in statistics. Linear refers to the fact that our model is going to be a straight line model. It's going to form an equation that's a, a line structure and it's going to form a drawing when we actually graph it of a line. And the idea of simple just refers to the fact that we're going to be collecting data from subjects where we take two measurements on each subject, only two. We'll have a predictor variable, which is the x, that'll be the variable that helps make our prediction for the response variable y. So let's write that down here. This would be called the predictor. And this y variable is called the response. You would have known it back in algebra as the independent and dependent variable. It's a similar idea here, except for we're going to use the phrase predictor and response to reflect kind of the real world application of this problem. So the example problem I put on the board here relates to hours spent in the gym on a treadmill and the weight loss achieved by those subjects who spent that time in the gym. And what I did is I, I you know, imagined that I collected five subjects and got their information. Five hours in the gym, two pounds of weight loss, ten hours in the gym, three pounds of weight loss, so on and so forth. And then I plotted those as points on an x-y axis, right? So for five hours in the gym, there was two pounds of weight loss, and for 10 hours, there was three, so on and so forth. And then what I did is I tried to superimpose a line that would model those points as close as possible. So I just threw up a line and said, let that line be the best prediction, or let me try to make that as a prediction of these points. When I did that, you can see that um, it looks like the line passes through three of the points perfectly, but it misses two of them. The two that it misses, those are the places where the line commits an error. The line's purpose is to model these points, to fit these points. When it doesn't fit exactly, we call it an error. This is essentially an over-prediction, because my line is what I'm predicting would be true at this particular x value. But actually, the number we saw, the dot is below what I predicted. Here, the dot is above what I predicted. So this is an over-prediction, this is an under-prediction. The error term is actually very simple. The error term here is simply the difference between the observation and the prediction. So, for example, if I observed in reality that at 10 hours in the gym there was 3 pounds of weight loss, if that's what I actually observed, I would have an observation there as 3, but my line predicts it to be 10 and 4, right? So you can see there, my line predicts it should have been 4. So my prediction error there is going to be negative 1 then. So that's where I got that negative 1 from. Okay, so that's how we come up with the errors. Now what we want to do is we want to find the best possible line to fit these points. What I did is just throw up a line there and I said, okay, let's use that line to model the data. But how do I know that line's the best? Because there's an infinite set of lines I can throw on this board to try to predict these points, right? Some would be very bad, some might be very good, some might be better than this one. But the thing is I have to have some criteria to assess the performance of my model, right? So the criteria we're going to use is actually going to be connected to the model itself, right? What we want to do. We want to form a line. All lines have a slope and a y-intercept. Let's ignore that term for a minute here. We'll go back to your basic algebra one. You have the equation y equals mx plus v back in algebra. So here, the m, which was our slope, is replaced by beta one. Just different notations to describe the same thing, the slope of the line. Beta naught is our like b from algebra. So beta naught is our y-intercept. That's where the line crosses the y-axis. That's it. And now I've thrown an extra term up here, the term e. That e represents the error that's in the model. In other words, I'm trying to predict weight loss based on hours spent on a treadmill. But is that really going to be perfect? Is there going to be a perfect connection between hours on a treadmill and weight loss? I don't think so, because what if one guy spends the same amount of time on a treadmill as another guy, but one of them eats Dunkin' Donuts three times a day, and the other one eats only vegetables and fruit and lean protein? Well, I imagine the vegetable, fruit, and lean protein guy is going to lose a lot more weight than the Dunkin' Donuts three times a day guy, right? So, even though they spend the same amount of time in the gym on the treadmill. So there's quantities that are not represented in the model that are going to affect weight loss. All the stuff that isn't included in the model directly in X, and X only includes hours spent on the treadmill. All the other stuff like diet, genetics, uh, weather, etc., that stuff is going to be here in the error term. In 
because that stuff exists, it means that we might have two x's that have the exact same x value, but have, of course, a different y output, right? So two people may spend the same amount of time and then get different weight loss results. So as a result, you know, the model's not going to be perfect because this random error term. Well, that's you know kind of disturbing, right? For people who want to make predictions. So uh, one of the things we want to do is we want to say, well, what if our line had a property so that even though we know we're going to miss the mark a lot of times, like here we miss the mark, here we miss the mark, here. What if we set up a line though? We pick the line that had the property that when we underestimate, like here, we have a corresponding overestimation that cancels it out, so to speak. What I mean by that is not necessarily one for one, but that the collection of overestimations balances out with the collection of underestimations so that the overall sum of errors is zero. That's going to be a trait we want. And I'll tell you why we want it. We want to know that the sum of errors for our line is zero because we want to be able to say that the average error, which is of course connected to the sum of errors, how do you get an average? You add up the values, divide by the number of values, right? So if the sum of errors is zero, the average error is zero. And the reason why that's helpful is that means that I can, instead of looking at the precise y value for a given x value, so if you come to me and say, well, I'm going to spend 10 hours this month in the gym on the treadmill, what weight loss will I achieve? I'm not going to say, well, you are precisely going to achieve this amount of weight loss. Instead, what I'm going to say is, on average, people who spend 10 hours in the gym exercising on the treadmill will lose this much weight. On average, I'll say. And that means I'm going to do the average value of y instead of y itself. And if I do the average value of y, these quantities will remain the same because these are just constants. They remain the same. They're not going to be affected by that. The average error, though, if the line has this property, the average error would be zero, which means this becomes our equation. So we no longer have the error term, which is going to make our equation prediction possible, right? Of course, we're only going to be predicting the average y for a given x, but still, we're going to have some prediction possible because of that. So that's really an important trait. We want to make sure whatever line we pick, the sum of the errors is zero. You may say, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have formulas for that later, but I just want you to understand what these formulas do. Right? So first thing is, sum of errors is going to be zero. Now, it turns out there's more than one line that has that property for any set of points, typically. So if that's the case, then we have to go to another criteria. And the other criteria we're going to look for is something called the sum of squared errors. The sum of the squares of the errors. So if you take all the error terms that we have, all of these error terms, you can imagine we had dozens of points, you take all the error terms for each point that we have, and then we're going to square those errors and add it all up, and you get a number. We want that number to be an absolute minimum. Of course, the smallest number could be zero, that'd be great, but it's typically not zero, but we want it to be the smallest possible number of any line you can come up with. So let's say there was an infinite set of lines that you could fit to these points. We want to find the line that has the sum of the errors be zero, and then the sum of the squares of those errors to be the smallest possible value of all the other lines it's competing against. And you may say, well, why do you want that? Well, because it turns out that when I have an error, it means I missed the mark, I missed my prediction. What happens if I missed it by two? If I missed it by two, so I'm off by two, the error would be two. What's the square of that error going to be? It's going to be four. It jumps, right? If I go from missing it by 2 to missing it by 3. You don't just go from 4 to 5 on the square error, I go from what? 4 to 9. It's another leap, right? So when you square something, if the number is bigger than 1, it starts to get much bigger when you square it, right? When you square a number less than 1, of course it gets smaller, and if you square a number that's, when I say less than 1, of course I mean you know, absolute value uh, between uh, 0 and 1. If you square a number like that, it's going to get smaller, and of course if you square 1, it stays the same. But anything beyond 1, anything past 1, you're going to start to get this effect when you square it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What that is, is it's charging a penalty. It's charging a penalty for missing the mark by too much. If you miss too far, if you're too far away from one of the points in your model, you're going to be charged heavily for that. That means lines that have, you know, maybe they fit all the points really great, but there's one point that it's way off on, that line is going to be pen punished severely for that error. And it should be, because imagine if these errors represented mistakes in the real world. Imagine this is a model that's supposed to represent the quantity of drug you're supposed to give to an athlete that's in it. Well, what if you know the model that you have for that scenario is way off for one particular dose combination, and you end up hurting an athlete or killing an athlete with your error, right? So a big mistake should be charged at a high premium, and that's what squaring the error does. 
So we might have lots of tiny little mistakes in a particular line. We have one line that doesn't make any mistakes except for one really big one. We'll probably end up choosing, because of this criteria, the one that has lots of small mistakes. Because those little small mistakes aren't going to have as much consequence as the really big error in some location of the line. Okay, so either way, we want to have the smallest possible sum of square error, and we want to have the sum of errors to be zero. If those two traits are met, we're going to have a special kind of line. The line is going to be called the least squared, well, we're actually we should say we're going to have special estimators for these quantities called the least squares estimators. So let's finally finish this discussion by saying, well, gee, okay, we want our lines to have these traits. Why? Well, we're trying to get this model, right? We're trying to know what that model is. Well, this is the theoretical quantities that we don't know. Those are like the parameters, the population values. You know, if we were all knowing, we'd know what those were. But we're not, so we're going to have to estimate it with sample data. Well, when you have a collection of points, you're going to try to estimate those quantities, the slope of the y uh, y-intercept. In order to estimate them so that your line has these two properties, you're going to use something called the least squares estimators. Least squares estimators. Least squares estimators for beta 1 and beta 0. Least squares estimators, you can tell by the name, least squares, the smallest sum of squares, right? Basically is what it's going to give you. So they're going to give you the line that has the slope of y-intercept such that that line fits these points so that it has the sum of errors equal to zero and the smallest possible sum of squared error. And when you get those estimators, of course, we're going to have to show that they're estimators by putting a little glitch in the notation. So our model will finally become y hat is equal to beta 1 hat x plus beta not hat. The hat just means that these aren't the actual population values, but they were estimated from sample data. The y hat is just you know, a result of that. But remember the interpretation of this y. For a given x value, it's going to tell you what the average weight loss is going to be typically for people who have that x value. So if you spent 10 hours in the gym, we're going to estimate, let's say, that the average weight loss is 4 pounds, right, for 10 hours in the gym. The average weight loss for somebody who does that is all right, and that's it. That's basically the idea behind it. Of course, we left out all the mechanics, like how in the world do I come up with these estimators, right? I know what properties they have now, but I don't know how to get them. It turned out getting them is easy. It's just a mechanical set of steps we have to follow. In the problem videos, we'll learn how to do that. But now you understand the property of the least squared line, and you understand the idea behind linear regression is trying to fit a model to fit these points so that somebody can come along and say, gee, if I decide to go to the gym for 22 hours, what is my expected amount of weight loss? Well, you go up here, go up here, go over and say, well, we think your weight loss would be you know, something over here. You know? And you can tell them the exact weight loss, or not the exact, but the average weight loss that you expect typically to have. And how good is that going to be? Well, you know, we're going to have ways to assess the accuracy of the quality of the model, and uh, we'll talk about that also in